if you would, Kay. Well, good morning, and uh, thank all of you for being here today and joining our campaign and announcing the final part of our campaign's Affordable for All Florida policy. As many of you know, this week our campaign has had the privilege of traveling the Sunshine State and hearing from our bosses, the people of Florida, on the issues facing them, just how unaffordable our state has become, and the very folks who have called our communities for home most, if not all, their lives. Whether it's taking on the big utility companies or putting the dream of home ownership, or even affordable rentals. Within reach of Floridians just a few miles from here where we stand, Governor DeSantis has actively chosen to stand on the side of special interest, not on the side of Floridians. But to that we say no more. Today I'm proud to unveil the third and final part of our campaign's Affordable Florida for All plan, aimed at standing firmly on the side of you, the people of Florida, not the big special interests. To that, three part of our plan outlines a vision to tackle high insurance rates that have been plaguing Floridians. Because of the prices of homes and cars weren't expensive enough, our state has the highest car insurance rates in the nation and the third highest property insurance in the nation. And Ron DeSantis is making it worse. When I was governor, I lowered property insurance rates by 10%. And I fought to make citizens' property insurance an affordable option for homeowners. But Governor DeSantis is raising property insurance rates because he just doesn't care. Floridians shouldn't have to stay up at night wondering if their paycheck is going to be enough to keep the lights on or the water running or to cover their home or auto in the case of an accident or natural disaster. But right now they do. Our plan outlines a vision where as governor, we're going to repeal the DeSantis rate hikes on your insurance. Additionally, I will work with the legislature and insurance commissioner to require large insurers to allow Floridians to be able to bundle and save on their home and auto policies. Right now, some national insurance companies are lining their pockets by selling expensive policies to Florida drivers while discriminating against Florida by purposely not offering homeowners coverage. That's not fair. If you sell homeowners in other states, you're going to need to be part of the solution here. No more discriminating against Florida. We're also going to help homeowners lower their premiums by making their homes more resilient against hurricanes and tropical storms so they can save money and protect their homes and families from whatever Mother Nature may throw at us. All while fighting an insurance commissioner who is going to hold the big companies accountable for rate increases and fight for the people. I will veto legislation that would increase your car insurance and I will set up an expert panel to make recommendations to the legislature for lower rates. At the same time, we're going to crack down on the fraudsters and get rich driving up your premiums, that get rich driving up your premiums. But for working families, our plan doesn't just stop there. The pandemic served as a stark reminder that affordable, accessible, high-speed internet isn't a luxury, it's a must-have. How is it that in 2022, we still have 10 counties in Florida with less than 50% high-speed internet coverage? In a world where just about everything is online, it's unacceptable that children in places like Dixie, Gilchrist, and Lafayette County don't have the internet access for students to do their homework or families to run their small businesses. That's why the Affordable Florida for All plan is a promise that the Christ administration will be firmly on the side of putting affordable, high-speed broadband internet within the reach of all Floridians. We're going to tap into as much of the federal funding as possible that our state is going to receive under the infrastructure law that I helped pass as a member of Congress. We'll prioritize coverage and affordability in rural and underserved urban areas. The digital divide cannot be allowed to widen in Florida. Our campaign is ready to take action that it will. With the final part of our plan unveiled, our campaign's vision for an affordable Florida for all is a promise to all Floridians that once I'm elected their governor, I will work to make housing more affordable for renters and home buyers, stop outrageous electric rate increases, 
and re reform utility regulation. Expand fast broadband internet so it's accessible to all and lower homeowners and auto insurance rates. I've taken on special interests before. I've fought to pull our state out of a crisis and I've spent my life in public service always putting the people first. Once I'm elected, I'll do it again. That's our promise of an affordable Florida for all Floridians. With that, it is my pleasure to turn it over to Kay. He's a homeowner here in Calabasas. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you, too. Well, <clears throat> we all support um, Governor Chris, and we are so excited about his affordable plan. It really touches upon all key issues within our households. Uh, for me, the property um, insurance and taxes are very, very important. As a, retire as a retiree, I think I represent a lot of us here in this state where we're every, uh, every year getting increases in escrow and having to pay either a lump sum or pay monthly uh, with an increase in our mortgage payments. So this is very, very important to us. And I applaud Governor Chris for thinking about all of these things and deciding to actually work for us here in the state. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you have any questions, we'll do our best to answer. Did I hear correctly? You want to require everyone who sells auto insurance also to offer property? You did. You did. That is Why correct. Is that well, it's a good thing because right now they're cherry picking, you know, and that's not fair to our Floridians. If they want to make a, a rate increase and do well by selling auto insurance, they ought to have to sell property insurance too. It's only fair for our people. We talked about it a lot. I know, Gary, I don't know that that exactly went through, but I know that we need it now. And now is what's important to our fellow Floridians. They're suffering, they're getting squeezed, and they need help. And they deserve better than they're getting from this governor. Because I hear about it from people all over the state, Steve. Uh, you know, I've traveled from Homestead to Pensacola to Jacksonville, Fort Myers and all over, uh, Gainesville yesterday and Orlando, now here in Tallahassee, and people are being squeezed. You know, the governor talks about how our economy is booming. Well, if you're a millionaire or a billionaire, maybe it's doing pretty well. But most people aren't millionaires and billionaires. Most people are like Kay and others that struggle to make ends meet. You know, many people are on a fixed income, especially our senior citizens, and they need help. And they need a governor who actually does care about them, and I will. You're the last, <coughs> you're the last candidate for governor that any of us remember doing a regional campaign, going on public TV, and doing that. That was a while ago. Mm -hmm. uh, 2006. And since you've been around the state so much, I'd like you to just really tell us and give us some wisdom. How is the Florida you feel at the grassroots meeting with the Florida different today than what it was back then? I feel a real sense of frustration. Um, I was with a group in Brevard County just a couple nights ago, mostly focused on what's happening in our school system. One was a new school board member, another a candidate for school board there. Uh, and they were talking really about the mask issue and how Governor DeSantis has mishandled it uh, and how their children are getting sick in school. Uh, they're frustrated. They feel like they don't have a voice in Tallahassee anymore, that the governor doesn't really listen to them, doesn't care about them that he cares more about his political future than he does about the Florida people of today. And how did you, how did you feel, what are your thoughts about the decision by the Democrats in the Senate that he walked out of the Congress? They had no way out of the Senate. I saw that, I actually talked to some of it at a softball game last night, and I understand it. I mean, they're frustrated too. You know, an awful lot of people in our state are frustrated because their voice is not being heard, their questions are not being answered, nobody seems to have their back. They want a governor that has their back, that really cares about them. And I know the Democrats in the legislature, they do have their back. But they're in the minority and they need more help, and help is on the way. And just quick, quick on that, uh, you, you said that you felt like Tallahassee doesn't, people think that Tallahassee doesn't listen to people. Uh, here in Tallahassee, with that hearing yesterday with that backlog, and uh, over in the House, which is filled by
that that's how do you change that dynamic? Well, you lead by example. I mean, people have asked me, you know, if you get elected governor on November the eighth, how are you going to work with likely what will still be a Republican House and a Republican Senate? It's all about relationships. You know, it's all about working with people. I visited with Chris Latvala last night briefly, asked him how his dad was doing. Uh, those kinds of things are important to people, you know, to show that you actually do care, you actually know who they are. Uh, that'll make a difference, I think. And I think by working together, having those conversations that you're not seeing now, Florida will be a better place, and Floridians deserve that better place. I think the support's about 70%. I think the importance is through the roof. Uh, I may have shared the personal story about my older sister, Margaret, who passed from a brain tumor. Uh, that was about six years ago, uh, before we had medical marijuana. And I think about her last days and how she struggled and the pain she had to deal with. People recommending you know, powerful drugs. And uh, it just tears at me that, that that existed then. And that's why I think recreational is so important not only to have it, but also to regulate it and to be able to tax it. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. And if we have the assets we can use to help our teachers in schools, not just give them bonuses, but actually give them a raise, you know, help law enforcement train better with the, you know, additional funding that we could have from that, it would be a great resource for Florida. What should, Democrats, what should the Democratic Party be doing that it's not doing to energize and register more voters? Well, I know there's a, a real effort to register more voters. I've talked to Chairman Diaz about it, Steve, and I think that it's very important that we stay focused on that, uh, that we make sure we're registering as many people as possible. Uh, I know that the chairman is doing exactly that. He's already set up people around the state for that very purpose. I know he's going to continue to do it, uh, and I, I applaud him for it. Thank you very much. Great to see you.